Hello and welcome to this frame loom tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to make two different types of frame looms, how to warp them and then how to weave with them. So here is everything that you'll need. We have a ruler, scissors, a fork, a pencil, some wool. We've got some cotton there, some chunky cotton and some hand dyed yarn. Any wool that you've got at home should be fine as long as it's got a bit of strength. I also have a hammer and some veneer pins and these are just for if you wanted to make the wooden frame loom. So don't worry about getting those things if you're planning on making the cardboard frame loom. Then we have two options here for the wooden frame loom. We've got a picture frame and they work great as long as you can take everything out of it like this. I also found a canvas that was in a wooden frame that was perfect for what I wanted to do so as long as your wooden frame hasn't got anything in it it'll work fine. For the cardboard frame loom I just use a cereal box, any type of cardboard will work but if it's a bit flimsy I would recommend gluing a couple of pieces together so it will last longer. So now I'm going to show you how to make the cardboard frame loom. So as I said I'm just going to use a cereal box for this but any type of cardboard will work. If you're choosing between making the cardboard frame loom and the wooden frame loom, I'd definitely recommend trying to make the wooden frame loom. It lasts a lot longer and is much easier to work with. So if you're going to make the wooden frame loom, if you skip to the time shown on the screen. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to cut a square with our cardboard. It can be as big as you want it to be, it just depends what you're making and how big it's going to be. So for me, I'm making a bookmark, so I'm not going to make it that big. So now we're going to measure and mark 1cm points across the top and the bottom. When you get to the bottom, you want to not have the marks line exactly up with the top, so I've moved mine half a centimetre across. Now we're going to cut along these marks. until we have something that looks a bit like this. So they should have one sticking out and then going in. And as you can see, they're opposite. So for the one on the left that's going out, on the right it's going in. Next, we're gonna cut a square out of the middle. Don't worry too much about the measurements for this. And there we have our cardboard frame loom. So we can see now why we do need it to be quite sturdy. So if you've got some weak cardboard, then I would definitely recommend gluing a few pieces together so it can be a bit stronger. Now I'm gonna show you how to make the wooden frame loom. So I'm going to be using the canvas frame, but as I say, a picture frame is absolutely fine as well. So I'm going to do exactly the same as I did with the cardboard frame loom. I'm going to mark one centimetre point across the top and the bottom. Um, I'm only doing six marks just because I'm making a bookmark so I don't need it to be that wide. 
but if you're wanting to make something wider then you can use the whole frame um, whatever you're making can be as wide as the frame that you've got so now I'm doing the bottom of the frame marking six points again but I'm going to do it half a centimetre across so I don't want the points to exactly line up with each other so now that I've made those marks I'm going to hammer the veneer pins into those marks that I've made And there's my wooden frame loom. So now I have two homemade frame looms. So now we're going to warp our looms. I'll start off with the cardboard one. So we've got two options to warp with. I've got some chunky cotton and some thin hand dyed yarn. So whatever you've got at home, whether it's chunky or a bit thinner, it's absolutely fine as long as it's quite strong. So I'm going to tie the end of my yarn to the first notch on my frame loom and then I'm going to make my way up and down going round the top of the frame loom and then down and back round the bottom of it as you can see here. So then once we've finished that we can cut the end of our yarn and tie it to the other end of the frame loom. And there our cardboard frame loom is warped. So now we're going to start warping the wooden frame loom. We're going to start off exactly the same way that we started the cardboard. We're going to tie our end of our yarn to the first pin at the bottom of the wooden frame loom. Then we're going to make our way up to the top and go around the pin at the top and then come down and go around the pin at the bottom and we're going to make our way all the way across the frame loom doing this. You'll see now why we had to move the pins slightly. They can't line up exactly because we need to be able to go around them. So once you get to the end then you want to cut your yarn and tie it to the last pin. Okay, so now let's start weaving. I'm just going to show you how to weave on the wooden frame loom because now they work in exactly the same way. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I've cut two pieces of cardboard. I'm going to use these as spacers. They're there to fill a gap and also they're there so that they can give me something to beat against. So I've put these in the opposite way from each other. So for the first one, I started from the bottom, from the left, I went over the first thread and then under. And for the top one, I went under the first one and then over and worked my way across. So now that those are in there, we can start weaving. So we've done our warp, which is the threads that you can already see. And what we're going to do now is the weft. So you can see here that I've wound some wool around a fork. As we're starting off, we just want to put our fork through, go up and down, over and under the different threads of yarn. What you want to do with your end is you just want to leave it hanging out just maybe a couple of inches of yarn and then we can sew this in at the end. So we're going over and under, coming out the other side and then swapping to the other way. So if you come out one side underneath the thread you want to go back through going over that same thread. As I'm going back and forth each time I'm beating down the threads with my fork. This is to make sure we get a nice straight line and all the thread all the yarn is really compact.
I change colour halfway through my weaving to the purple just so that you can see the difference between a thicker yarn and a thinner yarn. If you want to do this you just leave your colour, you want to leave a little bit of a tail hanging out so we can sew that in at the end and then you just start exactly the same way. So we just carry on doing this, going back and forth. If you run out of yarn or want to change colour, as I said, you just leave the tail hanging out the exact same we did at the beginning and then start your new colour. And then you keep going until you hit the cardboard at the top. So here is my finished weaving. As you can see I've still got a few tails hanging out there so I'll be able to sew those in. So I can't fit my fork right at the top and so what I'm just doing is weaving the last little bit in there with my hand. So now I'm going to slide the top piece of cardboard out and then I'm going to take the loops one at a time and I'm just going to tie them in a knot just to secure all my weaving not too tight otherwise you'll get a bit of a wavy edge but just enough so that it doesn't come undone you'll have an uneven number so just at the end I've just added it on or you can just secure it with a single knot by itself Then I do exactly the same with the other side, slide the cardboard out and tie all the loops together. You can either keep the tassels on the end or you can trim them as long as they've still got the knots there to keep it secure then that's fine.
and there is your finished bookmark.